Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns. And you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is part of the Intercontinental Group of Awesome, as I call it, my Sunday group with my friends here in the United States and then across the pond in Europe. And uh, that's why we're Intercontinental and we're awesome. Well, if you don't know already, you'll find out watching us play most likely. This is part of our uh, series that we'll be running until the end of the year. We call the I Go of Maliverse. Uh, the Maliverse originally started with some minimum rage play over the summer, set in a 1990s mall in, uh, in California. And we've since then kind of branched around and played a number of different games from Planet Crashers to Hack of Monster of the Week. Uh, and now we are in the modern day, the pandemicless modern day, uh, of the same setting of, of Beachwood, California. But we are playing a gentle, like, reskinning of my game, Hit the Streets, Defend the Block, which we retitled lovingly, Def Hit the Mall, Defend the Shops. Over the last number of sessions, our retired supers have... You know, fought some villains, uh, dealt with some issues at their mall, decided to open their own business as heroes for hire, went to an alternate universe, fought some time traveling uh, folks. It's It's been a hoot. Uh, a lot of stuff has gone on. So that is, yeah, other than lines and veils, I think that's, that's a good enough startup. So lines and veils are safety tools. We have a line against sexual assault, not interested in that content. Uh, we have veils, which means that if this content's introduced, we'll quickly cut away. We're not gonna get into any gory details. The veils are sexual content, torture and harm to animals. And then ask first, which is a, if you think that you're leaning towards this content or if you're interested in potentially suggesting it, check with the table first in an out of character manner. And if everyone's cool with it, we go forward. If anyone says, hey, can you try it a different way? No harm, no foul. We just rephrase it in a different way. And if you're like stuck, that was the only thing you could think of, just say so, source the table, we'll help you out. It's totally cool. The ask firsts are sexual content, which we also have a veil on. So if we say yes, then it's like we disagree, it happens and boot, uh, harm to children, Hopefully this isn't as bad, although with, with current, maybe it is. Politics and pandemics. So ask first on politics and pandemics. Geez, that sounds like how I want my life. Can I have that on a shirt? Ask first before introducing topics around politics and pandemics. I want that on my Star Wars shirt. Uh, cool. So with all of that on top of it, we still have the X card, which jumps on top and... Uh, if that's that's covering anything where you go, oh, I didn't realize that we would go there. You can say, hey, uh, I need to X card that. You can type it in chat, just say so. We'll stop play, pause. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to explain why. We don't need to know the story. It's probably already problematic enough that you needed to X card it. Just, I trust you, let's have fun. We'll excise it from our play and move on. No harm, no foul. Uh, and so with all of that out of the way, let's go from the right to the left in our character keeper order to introduce folks and characters. Jan, you are up first. Introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. Hi, my name is Jan. I uh, use he and pronouns. I'm playing the Swell or aka Simon Simmons. Um, uh, he is the glue uh, team role wise. Um, um his superpowers are that he has a super sudden jaw which means he's very good at talking to people um he uh has put modifications to either grow or shrink and um yeah that's pretty much it uh he has recently gotten a little bit better at uh fighting which is very cool as well Thank you. Next up is Sabine. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Sabine. I use any pronouns. I'm playing um, the cyclist or 
Dr. Bruce Emery, uh, or uh, as he was known in his younger years, Dr. Flux, but he doesn't use that anymore and that was a terrible person. Anyway, he really regrets being that. He, uh, well, he's actually, he's mostly a scientist. He um, holds some patents and he has um, not, he's not super rich or anything, but he is wealthy enough to be not only comfortable, but to help out people if, if they, friends, if they need that. Um, he also has a daughter, a rather estranged daughter because the, his ex-wife found out about the whole Dr. Flex thing sometime when the daughter was about 12 and then she said goodbye and left and, and they never he never saw them again but recently he saw his daughter again when she was i don't know super villaining minioning whatever she was doing there um and now he's trying to reconnect with her he also has a cat and a robot which are both need, both need some sort of care exactly Oh man, I just I just wanted you at some point to say, "What? Well, why did you decide to be a supervillain?" And then she could scream back, "I learned it from watching you." Okay, I I learned it from watching you. Jen, you're up. Introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. Hello, I am Jen. I use she/her pronouns, and I am playing Dog, aka Dana Maddox, uh, who also uses she/her pronouns. Dana is a refugee from the Mojo Verse. Uh, didn't really know any other way of living until some superheroes got guest appearanced on the program and uh, orchestrated an escape in which Dog and her gang was relatively influential. She's a hover bike rider and a very good fighter, but she is now retired and seems to have taken the property value own some shit collect social security method of retiring so now she does a lot of volunteer work what with uh, some dog rescue and in general keeps to herself but goes to the mall to walk and see friends and now there's this uh, heroes for hire business that's right however that's gonna go We'll definitely find out. Thank you, Jen. Alex, you're up. Introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. I'm Alex. I use he, him, and I'm playing Rafael Vieira Fernandez, aka the Peacock, who also uses he, him. He is the head of a line of superheroes uh, 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 of his sibling, his, no, his siblings, his his children and a few kind of adopted, unofficially adopted uh, children of uh, formed a Batman family style of vigilantes and superheroes, um, except for his oldest son, Hugo, who is now, he's a, an agent with uh, Palmer, but uh, who may be in some trouble being led astray by us old fogies. Uh, and recently he has a bit more spring in his step because he, um, after suffering some pretty bad damage to his already worn knees and legs, he now has bionic legs, some like internally implanted stuff into his existing legs, though they do need to be charged. Just imagining the moment when Dr. Emery's still away on the cruise where Raphael has to like walk near the and, and plug. I, I think he's been told by Hugo that he should not be do, getting them charged by uh, Emery because that's not good for the systems in the long run. It might. So if it's not life threatening, he's going to charge it the old fashioned way. Extension cable into his, into his calf. It's so good. All right. Thank you very much, Alex. Last but not least, Tyler, introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. 
Hi there, I'm Tyler, he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Golden Boy, who is our wild one. Uh, he is a speedster, light control, light form uh, sort of character. Uh, he has been a superhero pretty much his whole life, starting as a sidekick and moving on to solo work. And that is very much how he identifies himself. That's what's sort of the important thing in his mind. Uh, which has kind of rankled him a little as he's gotten older and not been able to do it. And so he's been behind a lot of the trying to push us to do adventures and pushing us into our, our new heroing for higher business. Um, he is, uh, I'd say he's a pretty s sweet guy, if a little bit dim-witted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And we're picking up after some incredible epilogues that ended kind of our, you know, volume one of the collection of Hit the Mall, Defend the Shops. So we're starting a new chapter, as it were, the Heroes for Hire chapter. And what I'd like to do is kind of go around the horn. There are a few things that I want you guys to catch me up on. Um, as things have happened. We're gonna say that some time has progressed. If I remember, we were like tail end of summer. So I kind of like to maybe start off with a few establishing shots of, of Beachwood itself. And we see that there are a couple of sidewalks and maybe there's uh, the scary house that we saw in the Monster of the Week game. It's been, you know, 20 ish years since then. So now it's all dilapidated and we see a number of, um, see a number of uh, like, like, you know, orange, orange and yellow and red leaves that are blown across by the wind. And then we see a, a, a shop of Beachwood's Beach itself. And there are a lot fewer people there, the people that are wearing like turtlenecks, it's indicating that it's, it's dropping in temperature. It's not nearly the baking heat of the summer at Beachwood. And uh, we see there are a number of signs up for Black Friday coming soon and and when we come into I go a mall we see that there are more mall walkers uh we actually still see the uh, police strips that are around the area well, not the police strips but like you know caution people working uh around the hole that was the fountain uh but you now see that there are a few workers there who are starting to like lay down a little bit of foundation I and mean, they've, they've pulled up the wood and they're actually trying to concrete over that particular area and uh so i would like to maybe we start off with dr emery heading into the office but as we do like what do we see on dr emery that is is new or is indicative of his big crews or the time that he spent trying to reconnect with his daughter he has an arm and uh, he has one of his arms in a sling <laughs> also he is wearing um one of these no he's not that's no he's his arm in a sling that's that's it he um otherwise he seems pretty fine so yeah that went well it actually did but that was not that was not his daughter. Oh, well, we'll find out. Obviously. Yeah. That, he'll that tell isn't... he'll tell people what happened on, during the cruise. <laughs> cool, cool. I like that. I like that a lot. And then I mean, he also seems pretty relaxed. So nice. Good. Uh and so we see you come into the office. We uh, there is, of course, a couple silent panels and greetings from Esther, who waves her robotic hand excitedly. Uh, and what is it, Dr. Emery, that you see about the office that is new? Like someone has brought this into the office or purchased it for the office uh, since you went away on your vacation. It could be could be anything from stuff on the wall or actual office equipment, new chairs. What is it that you see that looks different? I, hmm. Well, 
for some reason, I'm imagining a training bike standing there, but that doesn't even make any sense. So I don't know. Maybe there is a training bike standing around that is actually meant for uh, Gold Boy's um, gym thingy. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, it hasn't had uh, space. There wasn't any space for it. And now it's standing there. And um, well, yeah, it, it looks a bit out of place in an office. But well, you know, uh, somebody has uh, hung a bell on it, like at almost the early Christmas adornment or something like that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, and so check in with dana dana have you are you still participating in the finding homes for pets program or have you fully dedicated to heroes for hire i can do both sure so maybe we uh start off with you heading into the if you remember like you guys moved into the place to adjacent to the storefront that was donated maybe donated for tax write-off kind of thing for all of the the dog rehoming is hope with you like is she participating in this venture with you about uh, getting to know these these dogs sure she wants to she's invited cool and i think gives her something to do she's probably right. Like we're probably putting her up at my place until she gets her feet under her. Yeah, I think Cap has also offered the same, but she accepted uh, your offer and not Cap's for some reason. Didn't seem like there was any heat along it. Just uh, she seemed more comfortable with the old gang, perhaps. Perhaps. So what's something that you have to that we see on panel of you having to teach hope who's, you know, maybe going through some of the, this is what normal life in on this dimension is like. Mm -hmm. uh, Kind of of stuff. Uh, Goodness. Uh, Something to do with specifically the. I mean, does she eat a dog treat? Is she basically grab a dog biscuit at one point and just munches? I don't know. I don't see anything about a dog treat that necessarily signals that we should eat it. Fair enough. But, Except that uh, you know, feed it to a dog, tries it, you know, but no, that's fine. She doesn't yeah, do that. Yeah. Uh, but I think like she's still figuring out how money works all over again and a handful of other things. Uh telecommunication is actually worse here (laughs) that's true so it's like no you you gotta you gotta actually note down somebody's phone number you mean there can be less than five bars it's always i know i know moj was always five or better i know yep and you gotta actually put it in your contacts yourself you're your slab here isn't going to listen to it and then go, oh, well, okay, then I'll just add it. Oh, quaint. Mm-hmm. Annual entry. I've learned to like it. <laughs> Means I don't find the names of puds I don't even like years later. Nice. So, yeah, I hope helps you to find some homes for some folks she's i think her sales tactics are maybe a little more aggressive so you have to pull her back a little why wouldn't you want this dog why don't you want to be safe um yeah so uh i'm also i think that when we first see golden boy maybe we see golden boy in court Maybe like these things are finishing up uh, at a particular court case. Now, if I remember, Golden Boy went in on Goldies with someone else. Like you had mm-hmm. a kind of silent partner. So we get to see them. It was one of Tempest's relations, kind That's of right. uh, keeping up 
giving them something to have an income from. Exactly. Yeah. So one of Tempest's relations will say uh, potentially a um, like son, grandson. It's vague. We're not sure how old, but definitely like old, young. This is someone who is 20s at best and mm-hmm. they're they dress nice but not court nice like they don't go the extra mile um are you guys representing yourselves in this or have you actually gotten legal representation i i think i had picked up a lawyer from one of the strip mall law place lawyers <laughs> are right. us yeah no do we cheat them and how yeah that's yeah. it there we go yeah, so you're you're with Dewey. Oh, Gil's ready for a case. <laughs> Gil Dewey uh, is your lawyer, and he has like a wide tie. It's 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 definitely lawyer dress, but maybe out of time. He's got a lot of white on the edge, balding on top, pretty bad. So, and he looks, you know, we we, we see the gavel struck down. And he, winces a little bit and looks over at you and closes up his older briefcase and moves across and shakes hands with a pair of lawyers from gold's gym who are totally buff and dressed to the nines and they just look insanely hot it's just not fair and then he turns and says well we, we can make that work right marty <sighs> Well, I, I guess we're going to have to. And then the the kid, uh, let's give him a name. I think uh, I mean a, a T-oriented name, but something. Tim. Oh, man. Should we name him Tim? All right. Tim Ballator. There we go. Uh, Tim says, Goldie, why don't we just sell this man? Let's just let's just get out from under this. Well, uh, eh, Tim, there's really not a, a whole lot to sell. I mean, we don't own the space there, son, and uh, there's just the equipment. It's really there to generate income, you know. It's not going to generate income until we find a whole new name and Gil here says there's a whole bunch of fees associated with that why don't we just like you know deuces man just cut um, we're, we're still gonna owe him the money though Tim you don't think that we could sell the equipment and pay them off eh, well and Gil says, uh, I'm not your business uh, advisor, but I don't think that's exactly, it's used, it's used equipment. I don't think that's really going to work out. You guys can stay ahead of rent for at least until the end of the year. And if you can make some money on, on that, maybe you can work on a new lease arrangement. Yeah, I mean, much as I'd like to, Tim, uh, to just kind of walk away from this, uh, it, they'll come finding us. You know, it's, uh, I just don't know if it's feasible, Tim. Listen, this wasn't supposed to be hard. Uh, yeah, I know you've been working very hard at it, Tim. No, I mean, this was supposed to be turnkey, man. Uh, I, I understand. Uh, maybe, maybe you could give your uh, gramps a call. See if maybe he can help you out. I don't know, man. I'll try. You know him. He's hard to get yeah. hold of. Yeah, I do. Why do you have to name it after yourself, man? Like, none of this would have happened. I, I believe, Tim, you said... Your name's all that's worth anything, Goldie. Why don't you call it after you, Goldie? Yes, maybe I did that. I don't know, man. Look, uh, I, 
I'm gonna try and get us. I, I'm putting together the bunny. We'll see if we could pay them off. Once we do that, maybe we could look at having someone take over the place and we'll maybe like like a franchisee sort of thing. I, I have some irons in the fire there, son. Okay. Well, another option is just to get out of that mall, you know? Oh. Nobody goes there anymore. Well, yeah. Uh, there's been a little bit of an uptick, you know, people when it was gone, they were like, holy cow, they're, the mall's gone. And so people have been coming back through cause you know, there were people don't miss something till it's gone. Really? Well, uh, I, I have seen a, a lot more foot traffic. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll come by later. Um, but then he quickly shakes Gil's hand. See you later, Marty. And uh, Tim leaves you with Gil. I'm, I'm sure this will work out. Every business goes through a little bit of a rough patch. Well, uh, the, the check cleared for you, right? Uh, yeah, thanks. Yes, uh, I've been very lucky. Some friends have stepped in to kind of help me through this rough patch. And he claps your shoulder and then takes his briefcase and heads out and you see some people are kind of milling around waiting to move in and hit up the next docket so what do we see with golden boy as we bring the scene to a close i think i just sort of and and shuffle out cool so the next scene we have uh, is turn the page and we see Lady Liberty. We see the Statue of Liberty. And when we, we see some people who are like there, uh, we see that the clothing styles are a little older. Like this is, this is not today. Um, and what is it that we see? So first of all, we know that the swell saved the Statue of Liberty. And so this is our flashback to understand how the swell did this. And just to see a little bit of his supremely heroic action in this extremely stressful time. So. Who was it that threatened the Statue of Liberty? Was it our, our normal thug, General Melee? Uh, our, our person who threatened Beechwood with a tsunami once, Exceptionists? Uh, or, or was it perhaps our mysterious um, retired super known as the Wraith, who perhaps could have been trying to embody the Statue of Liberty somehow. Oh yeah, the race. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, we we start off there a bunch of people, and uh, so what's the what's our era like? When did this happen? Swell. Um, like what decade do you think it is? It's probably like late eighties. <laughs> Big hair everywhere, shoulder pads. <laughs> Some reason to see a person who's in like, you know, like the headband and like the, the slick aerobics and like leg warmers. Why are they here at, at the Statue of Liberty? We don't know. And uh, what is it that this well says as Lady Liberty like starts to move and we see this ghostly like wraith nimbus around her as uh, the Statue of Liberty starts to come to life? Um, I think he probably said something along the lines of like, uh, oh, you care to dance? <laughs> nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. Sweet. So uh, we, we see Lady Liberty is, uh, takes the torch and, of course, swings it at you because what else would we do? Maybe the, bo the book becomes some kind of shield as the, we hear the groaning of all the copper and metal of uh, Lady Liberty as the wraith is embodying it and is becoming this like titanic foe on 
the shore of New York. Um, so the swell, there's another hero who's trying to help you, um, Ghost Gunner. Uh, so Ghost Gunner has been around for as long as you guys. Uh, he uses like trick guns and gadgets. So he's, he's like, you know, a little bit like, uh, oh shoot. Um, well, actually that's not from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies because I don't think that Star-Lord actually did much with his gun, but Star-Lord in the comics had like trick gun stuff. So he, he used a little bit of gadgets, a little bit of guns and, and you know, phasing this part of his, his ghost abilities. We don't know if it's like a, he's actually using whatever. Um, so I assume that the swell is like you said to dance. So are you like growing bigger? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How does the ghost gunner help try to help you out? What is it that you we see him doing in the in the panel? I, I think he's probably like going to like he, he's going to hitch a ride on my shoulder, and he like he needs to he needs to get into the head. <laughs> so I need to get him there. Yeah, yeah, he's like, all right, come on, swell, just get me out of her ear. I'll take care of this. Yep. Sweet. Uh, and then what is? Oh, here we go. I'll throw this uh, towards Alex. So, Alex, what is the uh, what is it that the the Statue of Liberty does that that puts the swell off balance? I think it like I think it was like oh no, it wouldn't be a tour bus, not on a. <laughs> is this still on the island, or is this? Yeah, we'll say it's still on the island. Like they're fighting yeah. on the island. There are people mm. running around. It's a little Godzilla action going on. Oh, um, I imagine there is some sort of kiosk, something selling um, souvenirs. Okay. Some sort, of, so, some sort of small structure. Of course. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it gets like just. Kicked, Come get your Lady booted. Liberty slap bracelet here. Yeah, it gets like booted towards. Uh, uh, the swell. Sweet. Uh, like, so the, yeah, <laughs> an entire trailer is kicked towards the swell, uh, and you've got people inside it. So as the swell, I, I mean, do you let it fall into the water or do you try catch it? How does it that you save those folks? Or oh yeah, I definitely try to to catch them. Like swoop in with a big hand. <laughs> nice, nice. And yeah, you you swoop in with your huge hand, and that takes you off balance. And that's when yeah. the Lady Liberty like shoves you into the water, and a knee goes down into the water just on the outside of of the island. There, uh, what is it that you? How is it that you and Ghost Gunner are able to turn the tide, as it were, and? Oh, are we doing the cabbage guy? That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my cabbages. So anyway, uh, what, how is it that you turn the tide and defeat Lady Liberty as controlled by Wraith? Um, it's probably just, it's, it's probably just a trick. Uh, like you know, like staying staying low in the water and then suddenly rising up and you know going in for a an uppercut, but actually just pushing, putting Ghost uh, Gunner back there and it's actually nice. actually it's kind of more Ghost Gunner that's 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 that does all the heavy work, but you know the the picture in the newspaper is still going to be. <laughs> Of the swell next to the statue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where we end it. Like, like Ghost Gunner goes inside the head and he pulls off some crazy gadget that that uh, despirits uh, the Lady Liberty. And then we see a picture of the swell with Lady Liberty. Are you still like big? And you've got yes. like, what's the? Oh, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> yes, thank you. This is good. This makes me happy. And. Then when we come out of that, we see that picture. Where is that picture of the swell and Lady Liberty? Like maybe. Oh, I mean, good... he definitely has uh, hung that in the office. <laughs> Sweet. So we. I mean, come... heroes for hire with a great picture of a superhero. So. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. So yeah, we we heroes for hire, and we have this you know an old newspaper clipping, and maybe we have it a. Uh, 
done up as a poster now and they're like tacking it up on the wall uh the next scene i'd like to cut to is i'd like to see a scene between old grandpa peacock and the roost uh, magpie black condor raven and goldfinch all gathered together have they come to your house have are you meeting them in some uh dark area or is it some kind of roost headquarters where is this meeting taking place i feel like this is not my old you know dusty box covered attic roost i think this is maybe magpie's new roost like what her like you know in full working order roost nice and i don't know if i'm exactly welcome here to be like, if you're not welcome here did you no, just, i mean like, i'm not like i'm not like being told to go away but you know i'm the i think it's generally agreed that I should be retired and not be wanting to take part in this stuff. Nice. So, yeah, they're they're gathered around. Are they gathered around a table, or how are they meeting to discuss this uh, this important event? Uh, I think we've got a, like a square meeting table with some sort of doohickey lights and things i don't know it's they're moving things with their hands it's is there a remote I... <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah so yeah. magpie is is sitting there kind of man manually manipulating some things on uh, a particular video display and like pulling things out and goldfinch of course he's got his little golden phone he's tapping some stuff out and it looks like maybe he's not paying attention maybe he's on twitter maybe he's taking notes it's hard to tell he's multitasking uh and black condor is definitely the like moody one of the the crew like magpie is She's the darker one, but Black Condor is the moody one, right? He's the he's the one more who... performative. Do kind what? of moodiness, more like performative moodiness. Yeah, yeah, Magpie's. exactly. Just... He's not. He doesn't have nearly the dark past of what mm. Magpie has gone through, but for some reason, yeah, he's performatively moody. He's he's mm. the grumpy one. Um, and what's Raven, who's your former sidekick? Like, what's her attitude towards? Um, Raphael now I mean she married she married one of his daughters she she was a, a psychic of Peacock how are things between the two of you um hmm I think I might get along with her more than Raven I mean not um more than Black Condor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I think me and Black Condor are more uh, bird heads more than I think I feel she's, I feel like she's a good influence on my, on Black Condor. Like, so I kind of, so there is that, that understanding between me and Raven. Cool. Uh, so they are, uh, they're chatting about one of your, like, like there's an organization uh, that they are dealing with called uh, uh, the Freedom Fowl which is like the stupidest name according to goldfinch um and there's some kind of like alt-right group this trying to push americana as the justification for a violence against well anything they don't agree with right they, they call themselves true patriots and uh their uh, magpie is going through a few different video displays and trying to um, show, right? Like if you pull this pixelated image out, then we can easily see that this is who is actually one of the members of the Freedom Fowl. And so she's trying to build that case and Condor is just arms crossed while Raven is the one who's leaning forward and asking a lot of questions while Goldfinch just like, 
no, no. He he objects a few times. How is the peacock contributing to this um, conversation? I think I'm asking like the wrong question. I think oh, I'm like leaning in and like putting my finger into this like I'm like so. I mean, we should do this the old-fashioned way. We, like, we found one of these like low-level punks down at the bottom. You know, scare the bejesus out of them. Work way at the top. And I think that's when Black Condor looks up and says, "He's got a point." And Magpie says, "Okay, find us the low-level people in this organization. We're still trying to piece together, and we'll do that." I mean, you go on patrol and then you spot the mugging. Like in the old days. And that's when you've lost Condor. And he's like, oh, patrol. <sighs> I mean, do you have like a police band radio? We could, I'm, I didn't bring mine with me, but. Goldfinch looks up at you. Police band radio? What is that? Do they use smartphones for that now? And that's when Magpie says, Dad, um, can, can I talk to you for just a minute? Okay, Maybe, uh, uh, as, as you were, I yeah. say to the rest. <laughs> like, like, yeah, and then Magpie just nods like, yes, as you were, as if, you know, your command isn't really the command they're following and she walks over to the side she says dad what did you need why why are you here well, the, you've got this yeah but i've got, I've got the new the new legs I'm, I'm i'm ready to get back in the game i mean i, love I mean, of course legs. the team the, my team needs me but you know i just i'm gonna about be here for my family she moves up. She gives you a quick hug. Thanks, Dad. But you guys are trying to get up off the ground, and if they are going to learn how to fly, don't they need the peacock? I mean, yes. I mean, not to put any of them down, but, you know, I mean, Emery can't fight worth a damn. I mean, lightning powers only get you so far. It's... But, um, and the others, you know, they, they rely on their pals a bit too much. But I mean, they're good guys. They're good people. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, I think you should, you should go help them be the heroes that they want to be, right, Dad? And if you're splitting time between here and there, nobody yeah, gets right. all, of, all of you. But you'll, if you need backup, you'll, you'll, you'll ring. Yes, of course. Of course. Um, I mean, I mean, yeah. They, I mean, they do need me. So, listen, we're probably going to have to head off to Chicago. Do you mind if I tell Fernando's mom that he's going to be staying over with you? Because I really need him along. Sure. I mean. And she comes in and quickly like, gives you a kiss on her cheek and starts escorting you to the door, but it seems so pleasant. I, I try to talk the, the, my little sigh. I try to keep to myself as I accept the being led away. And then Raven, you know, gives you a big wave and Goldfinch looks up and nod your way and black contour just just yeah you know, just a single nod that's it that's all you get it's more than most yeah and i let myself be led away all right cool uh so we'll pick up with a group scene yay the whole group together not sure why but we'll do it <laughs> um 
Beta, do you cut in for a break or have you finished up with the dogs uh, for the day when you come into the office? My shift is over volunteering, so. Cool. So you come into the uh, Heroes for Hire office. Golden Boy, you're just getting back from the case. Uh, and Dr. Emery, you're there with your arm in a sling. And yeah, so Swell, uh, you were already there. We'll have uh, Raphael coming in about the same time as um, as Golden Boy when you guys arrive. So yeah, dog, you're the first one to catch that Dr. Emery. He's got an arm in a sling as he comes back from his big trip. Uh, I look up and I'm, I've got like a, a tray of Mc, not McFlurries, uh, blizzards. I think they are from Dairy Queen. Uh, and I'm setting them down on desks nearby, and I look over at Brutus's arm cast, and I'm like, "Oh, are you gonna have a little trouble with this?" Nah, I don't think so. It's it's fine. I'm fine. What happened? Uh, well, we're on this cruise. Me mm -hmm. and Sammy, and uh, well, started to be a bit personal between us. And then this uh, person who called himself the Scalawag tried to um, take over the ship and blackmail everybody uh, or so do some blackmail and, and stuff like that. And he had a whole crew of, dare I say, buccaneers, pirates. Like, I don't know. They seem to have their costumes from opera stock, I think, and some of them sang. But, you know, they they uh, tried to do a bad thing. And so Sammy and I thought, oh, well, maybe it's a time for a little father-daughter bonding through sabotaging the ship and the Scalawax um, sound system stuff. And because he had the weird power of making people like his music and sing stuff. It's, huh. don't ask me. It was kind of mind controlling stuff. I don't like that. Anyway, no. we uh, fought and uh, one of those pirates uh, got a little too close to me because I, well, I was overconfident. It was my own fault. Yeah, it and like I, a lucky shot. Yeah, well, well, I, I fell. I broke my arm. Oh. Yeah, but we took out the scalawag and um, nobody knew it was us. That was the bonus, so. Nice. Yeah, and after it, it was, uh, well, afterwards we were escorted into the harbor and had to answer lots of questions, um, but got a nice, uh, nice stay at a hotel and was basically mostly fine afterwards. I mean, I had to cut short the, the trip because I had to go to the hospital, get a cast for the arm. I hear those are good casts. Yeah, 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 good. yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it has to stay in there for a few weeks until it heals because apparently having able to control electricity doesn't give me better bones. Who knew? Oh, well. Today we Any any anyway, um, yeah, we still got stuff to work out, Sammy and me. But uh, at least we didn't totally blow it up. So, Man, it sounds we... like you worked together pretty good. Seems like a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, we fought pirates, <laughs> even pirates. if it was just opera pirates with mind controlling powers. But still, <sighs> yeah, it was cute up until the mind control. Yeah, well. You just, you don't get people to pay you money for being cute unless you're, I think, five. Or Marty. I mean, he's, he's got something of that. But I'm no expert on cute. You, you sell rescue dogs to people. How do you do that without being an expert on cute? I mean, anybody can tell that a good doggy is cute. That exactly. don't require no expertise. <laughs> uh, I think you're doing very well with that. Well, 
<sighs> Thank you. We got to come. Oh. What are we looking at? Go ahead. I think I come into the office and like glance at Emery and think, have you been cheating on me with another nemesis? <laughs> that, no, no, Captain Peacock, okay. that was, uh, that scuttlework mm -hmm. was not up to your standards, not at all. Not nemesis okay. material at all. Mm. Okay, where's, this, where's the extension cord? I find a, a chair, sit down, drag the plug, pull up my trouser leg. Clunk. A little bar on the side of my leg just starts to show a charge rising. Oh, you should really have better batteries for that. I may be relying on it too much. Huh? I might be using it too much. But I mean, you know. Feels like the old days. So. Yeah. yeah, you're not hurting yourself with that, are you? No, no, no. Like overdoing it with your with your joints or something? No. To, to, to. No. Huh. Okay. Blizzard. Okay. We have we have a coffee machine, right? I mean, thanks for all oh, yeah. dinner, we, but we do uh, have a coffee machine. I like my, I'd, I'd rather have a coffee. This, this is too sweet for me. Yeah, all right, I'll put it in the fridge. I've got to watch my sugar levels. Mm, oh, sorry. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, me, me too. Mm. <laughs> a little bit sugar won't hurt you. This ain't a little bit, though. <laughs> No, we'll see when Golden Boy gets here. He's a hummingbird. And on that, I think we get a page split into panels, and we see Golden Boy in front of a full-length mirror, and he's there in his tank top undershirt and his boxer shorts in the first panel. And then we see him in this old man gray suit. He's like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, then we see him in his gold silk wide lapel open up down to the navel tight velvet pants with bell bottoms and gold chains from his disco days and eh, no 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 um we did see him in a kind of gold track suit no 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 and then as the door opens we see him come in and he's in a very nice kind of 40s era big shouldered three-piece suit got a uh, flower in his lapel got on a fedora at a kind of cocky angle as he comes walking in color of suit um it is pinstripe but the pinstripes are gold nice and black you get a nod from Raphael. like he appreciates this a nice <laughs> fancy suit. Uh, uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Marty, what's the occasion? Well, I was, uh, well, I, ha I had court today and I thought I would spruce up and, uh, well, maybe go down to spa and see if that nice Miss Brown would like to go and have dinner sometime. And I, I, I felt like I should dress up a little. Now, there's a good boy. <laughs> I'd like. say you look swell, but that could be misunderstood. So, <laughs> I suit. It's taken. Yeah. Ooh, blizzards. Yeah, want one? Oh yeah. I'm gonna put the rest in the fridge. I'll be right back. Well, uh, everybody's here. What's uh, what's uh, we got? Any cases? Oh, well, oh. Esther? Oh, yes, thanks for asking. You do have a number of cases. Uh, but very few of them are paying. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's well, take a look. You know, we need to get our name out there still. <laughs> yep. Never took payment before. 
Doesn't mean we're going to start now. Well, it, it does sort of mean we start now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. That's the higher in the name. Yes. Mm. Cool. So as you guys start working through the getting some like contacts from the contact form on your website and there have been a few voicemails that uh, Esther has transcribed and so as you look through the various opportunities you see that one that kind of pops in is uh, there's a um well, someone has asked if you could look into a new drug in Beechwood that uh, has caused a few ODs, and the people who are taking it are claiming that they are gaining the ability to fly and gaining superpowers. Oh, that looks dangerous. Yeah, that's a bad idea. So yeah, I didn't split the teams, start scouring the city. Um, maybe we should scour the internet for information before we start scouring the city. And um, I mean, that's just, I don't know. I never scoured the city before. Let's see if we can find some proof that these cases done happened. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And this was on our website, Rich? Yes, uh, the report came through the website, which I set up for you. Thanks, Esther. That's real efficient. Uh -huh. And uh, is, there some, uh, is there some contact information that this person left? Uh, yes, they, they left a Gmail. That's Google's okay. email platform. It's free. Uh -huh. Thank you, Esther. Nodding um, along, like taking in this new information. Maybe we should write to that person and uh, say that we would like a personal contact. Like they could call us or we could call them or we could open up a chat room. I've already sent them contact. I'll let you know when they reply. Thank you. Do we, anybody still got contacts with the, the police or, or Rafe? You, you think Hugo and his folks might have heard of something? All my police contacts are retired, but I can see, I mean. Retired cops keep their ear to the ground. True, true. And they got less uh, problems with sharing information. Mm -hmm. Don't know how, I mean, I can call Ryugo, but I feel he might have burnt some bridges. Yeah. That stands yeah. to reason. Yeah. Well, I can always go beat the mattresses. Win friends and influence people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should maybe try to get a sample as well. But Brutus, would you be able to, like, figure out what it's made of um yeah i i studied chemistry as well as physics so i can um i have a lab it's it's a bit rudimentary but i think i could figure out if you got me a sample all right I could figure out how it was made or if there was anything really unusual about it because if it gives people superpowers you can't do that in a normal lab oh they you know it, this this thing about flying, you know, I, I watch these uh, after school specials. That's one of these things like the angel's dust and stuff like that make you think you can fly. But uh, I saw a girl run right through a plate glass window and it was uh, she did not fly. Yeah, but it feels like you do. Right till you hit the ground. Oh, you don't always hit the ground. If you're doing this in a reasonably safe space, it's, it's, oh well. None of you have any, taken any 
have any taking any illegal drugs, right? Sorry. Brutus? Oh. Yeah. What, the 70s was... was the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, back at the disco, a little go-go yeah. powder was always a help when you were wanting to run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was wondering, but uh, you always seem so squeaky clean. And I'm looking at Raphael mostly. Dry cleaners. Hmm? Sorry, I didn't get that. Dry cleaners. Hmm. What, 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 kind of, what kind of drug is that, dry cleaners? <laughs> the best kind. <laughs> Taking out my phone to call Hugo, see if uh, to see if I can actually get some help on this. Nice. Uh, see here, a couple of rings, and they say Parma. This is Hugo Fernandez. This is your father. Hey, Dad. Hey. What's I up? Was now, if you, if you, there's no trouble. I was just wondering if maybe you could, uh, you know, press the old keys and get a little help for your old dad on a case. What kind of case, dad? Like cat up a tree kind of stuff? Um, yeah. The adjacent. Mm -hmm. um, any people flying or showing superpowers suddenly around town? Oh, you definitely are going to have to do a little bit of jaw action with him to get him okay. to open up about that. Well, I'm not exactly lying or anything, but can con artists be used? You're trying to con your your own son in rolling on the government agency he works for? Sure. Yeah, I think you can be conning your Yeah. Is this being normal? To... I think it's pretty normal. Yeah, I don't think you're using any superpowers here. Um Joel? Definitely. I don't think any of my uh yeah. unless deflection from my <laughs> Well, the good news is that defense yeah, yeah. doesn't need to kick in because uh, tension oh, yeah. not involved in the role. It's a good difficulty, so you um, three powers are better. Yeah, I don't think I can. Use, there's nothing else I'm using, so six dice. I'm just gonna roll. I think. All right, go for it. Uh, wow, a five, is... six, five, four, five. <laughs> wow, that's Titanic. Uh, it's, uh, uh, just a sec, and then all of a sudden, hold music comes on. Uh, so he put me on hold. <laughs> Golden Boy, what's the music that Parma, this government agency, has as their hold music? Um, it's the uh, private eyes are watching you, private eyes. Oh, that's so good. Yes, yeah, so you get a bit of that and then it breaks in. Thank you for calling Parma. Your concern is our concern. We're going to do our level best to get it right back to you in just a moment. And then it comes back on and then eventually you come off of hold and you hear there's a bit more of echo. Uh, sounds like maybe he's, oh, what happened to my weird? Oh, well. Uh, it sounds like maybe he is in a hallway of some kind. Yeah, Dad. Um, you're talking about blue. Yeah, I'm. I'm aware of it. It's. We have a few agents that are looking into it right now. It, we it couldn't hurt to have some help. I mean, we. We all have superpowers now. I know. Dad, listen. I can't really send you anything and 
unfortunately most of the real details are classified and they've revoked some of my access levels i can tell you where which which police departments are have reported it um and give you a few names but that's about it is that enough I mean, that that's, that's more than... are, you, are you doing okay there yeah yeah i'm great dad um i'm doing great come by sunday we'll, we'll have a meal you can bring the bring the bring the kids and that sounds great. I need to. Yeah. Um, I need to get back. Sure. Yeah. Um, Be careful, Dad. Okay. Of course. Mm. All right. See ya. And then he hangs up. Was he a help, Ray? Uh, yeah. Um. I think we've got some some leads to follow, like the the districts and some names. All right. Um, say, uh, Rich, is Brutus aware? Did we get to a point where I know what Sammy is doing for a living? Oh, that is fascinating. You know what I mean, Sammy is doing for a living? I it's I totally okay if uh, she hadn't told him and they never really got to a point where he learned that. I think... So I think she would have admitted that she is working in an advanced sciences and she got an advanced science degree, but hasn't told you for what, what corporation or laboratory. Yep. Because we pr probably got sidetracked by science shop talk. Yeah, exactly. Science shop talk and, you know, singing operatic piratical uh, villains. There's a note in chat that I wanted to respond to. Absolutely. That counts for a refresh scene. Let's go ahead and give uh, Brutus, say, four spark back, just so uh, you're, at, you're at a good level to kind of in our new volume here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. No problem. And actually, was... thank, thanks to Jen. Yeah. That, yeah. Thanks, Jen. I'll kind of sidle up to uh, Rafe and uh... Everything all right with Hugo? Yeah. I, I, I think he might have, you know. I think helping us may have caused him some problems. Yeah. For the old, right. you know, agency. You know, bureaucracy, they don't reward you for success. They award you for following rules. Yeah, uh, I mean, All bad orders. Never really had to deal with that. Yeah. You know. I'll be honest, I mean, if losing a little status inside of karma is the cost of the two of y'all working together, I think it's well worth it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, him working with us did some good. But he can pull yeah. his way out of it, right? Yeah, I mean he's, I mean he's damn fine field agent when you got a good kid, Raf. Yeah, I do. I do. Smart boy doesn't take after his daddy. Yeah. Small blessings. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's definitely let's let's three spark back for some quick bonding there. So Golden, Dana, and uh, Raphael, all three of you regain three spark because that was a great uh, follow up. So uh, after Raphael's call, you guys start working. You get a quick text, Raphael, from a phone number you don't recognize. Uh, it it the first message is it's Hugo. This is my burner phone, and then he sends you a few. Uh, he sent you three names, and he sent you the 
Beachwood Police Department as well as the Bedlam Police Department, which is just up the coast. And that's the information he has on the drug known as Blue. And I tossed it that is. with the my phone. I tossed my phone with it open, just like onto the kind of little coffee table between us. Uh, he, has quite an, he has quite an amount of independent in- energy to him, your son. I admire that. <laughs> yeah. Sim, you, I mean, let's be honest, you're a big damn hero. Uh, you. I'm big. Well, yes. <laughs> cops always appreciate that. Uh, maybe you and Rafe go talk with cops. Um, that, that mm-hmm. leaves me yeah. and you, dog, to maybe go and beat the streets. And, Sounds about right. And Brutus, you're gonna do your voodoo you do so well on the interwebs? Ah, uh, voodoo I do so well on the interwebs? I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not a researcher, researcher per se. I can do academic research, but internet. Re- I'm. Oh, you, if you don't mind, I tag along. Brutus, just, just do and, the clickety clack. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, if I do the clickety clack, I do it usually for other purposes. You know, I'm not uh, the Google foo man. That is not one of my uh, expertises. Well, uh, you certainly can go with me and dog. Oh, okay, I don't yeah. know. If- you want to deal with the cops? I do not want to deal with the cops. Usually, if I have to enc- encounter us with the cops, that is not very pleasant. So, um, yeah, and even though these days it's mostly like, your bike is too fast. Do you know why we're stopping you? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I've never, have never done this beating the street things since I've been 15 and it meant something totally different back then, so. Yeah. I, 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 I'm sure you'll do fine. We're just going to kind of go and listen, I guess. Dog's really the one that's uh, the, the, the best at this, I suppose. Uh, do y'all mind if I run by Spa before we head out? Go for it. Do it. Sure. Go for it. And tell us all yes. the juicy details afterwards, of course. <laughs> or not, if you don't want to. Make sure there's juicy details. Oh, no, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it. And I'll tip my hat down and head out. Cool. And after Golden Boy leaves, Esther looks to you, uh, Dr. Emery. I'm curious. Why would there be juicy details about a pet store grooming area? Um, well, Esther, would you mind, do you mind if I tell you later? Because this is a complicated area of human human interaction. And I think it's not something I would like to talk in in a shop where people might go in, so. Oh, yes, we must maintain decorum. So he's not eating any of the pets. No, he's, this is no, this is a metaphor, Esther. He's not going to eat any of the pets. Cool. And with that, we've reached the staple. We'll go ahead and take our break. It's 20 after, take like 10 minutes, and we'll see you guys at half past. Cool. So Rafe, uh, a.k.a. the Peacock and the Swell, we're going to head to the Beachwood PD in order to try to talk to the cops there, learn what you could about the drug known as Blue. Mm. Uh, And then the others, uh, Dr. Emery, Dog, and Golden Boy, were hoping to... Uh, hit the streets and see what they could find out, right? You, were you like hitting the streets as in to find out where to purchase the drug kind of thing? Is that getting a sample seemed to be the thing that yep. yeah, somebody I was gonna... suggested? I was basically gonna hit the streets until uh, I managed to shake out a dealer and then you know, shake them down, take some of their blue back to Brutus. Nice. 
That sounds good. That sounds real good. Cool. So let's uh, let's pick up with uh, Peacock and the Swell making your way to Beachwood PD. So you guys tell me, is it too cheesy if Beachwood PD is like near the beach and that a lot of their cops are like bike cops? You know, is that is that a little too not, not too weird? To this, this feels <laughs> right. It feels like, yeah. It's like totally wrong for Raphael's like, you know, swinging in on the fire escape from the eighth floor <laughs> to talk to shady cops about things. Yeah, it's just ground floor cyclists, bright windows and so you like that it's totally wrong for a peacock style that they you want that to be a true? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Just make it sure. <laughs> mm. Good. So yeah, lots of windows, very California look to it, kind of a modern architecture, uh, Beachwood Police Department, lots of bikes. It's very green. They've got like a, on the roof, is an actual kind of greenhouse garden kind of thing and they they're lots of uh, like the cops are in like bike shorts you know it's it's very bright blue is the style of their police uniforms and it's a choice <laughs> it's a choice it's it's a good choice it's uh, i don't know if you guys have seen the reno 911 tv show but there's one guy who walks around and like coaches shorts and it's hilarious yeah reno 911 from a pretty pretty funny show for for a brief period of time anyway uh yeah so you guys come do you, do you walk up do you like do we just see you like come on on the scene with uh in your superhero costumes like what is the approach here i think the swell being the one who's the great talker and the glue should probably lay this out what does this look like um i mean i think i think we're just gonna just walk up to the, the front desk right it's like <laughs> there's no fire escape so <laughs> i guess do we talk at the desk yeah it's like it's a gonna make it hard to the... disappear suddenly mid conversation, but you have to throw down a smoke bomb or something. Yes, <sighs> don't 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 throw smoke bombs in the in the. Thing. I mean, I've got them just in case, but I'll I'll no. follow your lead. This is. Yeah. Hmm. Right. You, you guys That's walk right. in. You still hear, we hear the, the ocean. You're not far from the boardwalk, right? You come in and the um, behind the desk, the desk is like one of those kind of rounded thrust desk. It's like right there. They're little nice place to sit on either side. You smell popcorn when you come in and the it, it was, his name is um, well, it's, it's Deputy Fife. He says, "Good afternoon, gentlemen. Welcome Quick to the police department." To... Yeah. Huh? Did the swell come in costume? No, I think he's just wearing like um, he's just wearing regular clothes, and he's just you know just being a normal guy. <laughs> so street clothes, not your coveralls from. Uh, when you're a concierge at the... Uh, oh, yeah, no. I, I think he's definitely more focused at the moment uh, to the the agency anyway, so... Like, wearing, a, wearing overalls at, at the office is weird. <laughs> sure, sure. So how is Peacock dressed, Raphael? Uh, it just his... You know, the white suits, the... He stands up. Welcome to Police Beachwood Police Department, gentlemen. How can I help you? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Deputy. Um, well, um, let me first uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Sam Simmons. Um, Rafael Fierra Fernandez. 
we we uh, were hoping that we could uh, well maybe have a, 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 a be of mutual benefit to each other. Um, we 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 understand that there's been some uh, some some reports of uh, some some drugs that give people abilities. So he pauses for a moment and says, "Are you are you gentlemen from the press?" No, 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 no. Uh, we, we, me, and my associates, uh, we are, uh, uh, in in a sense, we are experts when it comes to uh, uh, the, the, the 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 special abilities, uh, so, so to speak. We, uh, we we have a lot of experience uh, in hmm. our in that field. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Uh. Okay. Well, I appreciate your offer. Listen, we have some, um, we have a number of neighborhood anti-drug campaigns. I, I've got some uh, brochures. And you suspect them? I could, of, of doing a great job of helping to keep our, our streets safe and clean. Absolutely. Um, there's several of them that take on volunteers all the time for folks who want to help canvas or offer con- counseling to youths in need. I think having a... a Simpson, like, why is he wasting well, your time? The thing is, uh, Deputy, drug use is, of course, a very serious issue, but we're more concerned about the powers. Can you, do you, can you confirm for us if there's an effect... Is there a problem with new abled people coming on the streets? Uh, maybe. I understand that as you age, the desire to get back what you've lost has got to be very strong, gentlemen. But uh, Simon, Raphael, I really think that you guys should steer clear of any kind of drugs that offer you or you know, say that they'll offer you any abilities. Like, honestly, guys. I think, I think Simon just, you know, just grows a bit more. Just a little, just a little bit. Just, okay. Not, 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 <laughs> his uh, eyes widen is now, the like conversation just tilts a whole lot from what he thought was happening. Uh, so why don't you now that you've kind of shown some bona fides, as it were, Give me a jaw roll to see if what? he'll share any information. It's going to be a remarkable for him to crack without sending you up mm-hmm. the line for him to just spill some information here. He is kind of the front desk operator. I mean, am I being normal? I guess. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Um, so that's nine. Uh, well, that's nine. Uh, I don't have a lot of <laughs> spark, so I'm just not going to use any. <laughs> Gosh, you don't. Rough helping? Yes, I think I'll throw in a... I'll, uh, I'll throw in a... What was the charge rating? The, the, it was incredible. Four. You need, need four. Oh, sessions. remarkable. Okay. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll throw in two. All right. Oh, you're going all in, huh? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what that does. Uh, four, that's like, what's it? One, two, six three, successes. Four, five, and six man. successes. But- now I wish I'd declared three that I, I wish I declared tension was involved, but I just I didn't <laughs> see this being a big fight as much as you know pass or fail. So yeah, that's that's pretty great. Um, he says, "You're the swell." Well, yes. And I just my, my associate here. Is you had more hair when when I when I read your comments. The, yes. It's it's, it's it descended descended down to my chin. 
instead. But it looks good. <laughs> it looks great on you, sir, Mister yes, Mister the Swell. Thank you. I am a huge fan. He kind of slaps oh. the desk. Oh, just the 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 Lady Liberty. It just the whole thing with the the bridge. I. I can't believe you let cars ride over your back. That's amazing. I... Yes, well, but to get back to, to the, the topic, and we can maybe talk a bit about the old days later. Um, so is there any truth to, to the, the rumors of... Oh, he looks back. He says, I really shouldn't be saying anything, Mr. The Swell, but... Oh, we it's... understand, we're trying to help you, of course. We're still tracking down to see if this is some kind of elaborate pet prank for, you know, like Twitch or YouTube or whatever. But it does seem to, to be that there might be a drug on the streets that gives people different kinds of physical abilities for short periods of time, but their bodies just can't handle it. They, they go out. I mean... One guy ran really fast and his heart exploded. It just, Oops. yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Not no. good at all. But because of the temptation, trying to keep it out of the press, keep everything on the down low until we're able to figure out if this actually is coming from this, this drug that they're calling blue on the streets, and then, of course, we're trying to get it off the streets. So if you have any more information, do let us know, Mr. The Swell. And are you like his attache or bachelor? This is the peacock. You've never heard the peacock? I've... The roof? No, no. I, I've totally heard of Black Condor. <laughs> and the like crossovers with the uh, the magpie and... Raven, and you're you're affiliated with the roost. That's great. Let's Did they the send you down here to get information yeah. for them? Uh, go, go ahead, Raf. Educate the man. <laughs> is it um? Is it obvious where his like desk is? Like, you know, his like actual. Does he have like a little desk behind this? Oh well, I mean, area? he's like. I imagine that there's like this counter when you first walk in, and a door to the side where they can let people in in a waiting area while you're mm -hmm. waiting for detectives to come out. And he's just mm -hmm. like the front desk operator, so mm -hmm. he's at his desk for now. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of like something he could sh do. Like, I was like. Hmm. I mean, he's like, got a little computer. He's got, you know. I like okay. I just like, do you mind? And it's like, but does he have like a letter opener? I don't know why he would have a letter. Sure, opener. Like, sure, he has a letter opener. Yeah, he's got lots of forms. He has the whole yeah, like office supply yeah. type deal. Would, do you mind? And I just, like, of course. Just take that, and then I just like glance around the room. Hmm. And then I fling it sideways. Uh, I'm gonna try. I want to like ricochet, it. so like it just like the knife then that like, comes straight down from above, like right next to his hand. Oh, <laughs> nice! Into the desk. Like, I was off a few items. Should we put that to a roll, or do you think it's just a thing that Raphael pulls off? <laughs> I, I will accept the consequences. <laughs> <laughs> God, the idea of him like stabbing him in the hand is too tempting. So yeah, let's have you roll. I, I think this is a good difficulty. You're not going okay. too overboard here. Uh, is it being super? I think you're being super. Um, is hat? I can't remember if I can use two stats at once. One stat. Or, one stat. Well, I'm using tools. But yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, um and highly trained. That gives me eight. Um and he said it was good. Yeah, good difficulty. Uh, you need three. And I I do think there's just a little bit of stress here, so I'm gonna put some tension on the wall. I'm gonna put one bit of spark in to get to nine. Okay. 
Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, hmm. Two, three. You just pull it off, but there's like, you. It lands. I think it lands like right by his hand, and there's a moment where we see just a single Trickle. bead of sweat <laughs> come off your head, and he looks at it. Wow, that. Wow. That's okay. The peacock. I uh, will. Oh, yeah. Whoa. You're totally like the uh, like the previous, like you set up the roost or something. That's that's really that's great. I like mother of both. Thank you. I'm sorry, Raphael. Hey, no offense intended, peacock, sir. Uh, listen, Mr. The Swell. Um, is there anything I can do for you or, or well, the question is is there anything we can do for you sir right right yeah so he he looks back he says I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I'm I'm not actually working the case and if I give you any actual details other than what I've already told you Detective Flannery will kill me so I'm going to put you in contact with Detective Flannery. If you want to wait around, uh, Detective will come out and chat with you a little bit, maybe share some some information. You guys can do something on the side. And, you know, you guys aren't officially part of the police department, but I'm sure, you know, you can work something out with the detective. Oh, thank you very much. And yes, we hope maybe we can help us in a consultancy um, uh, ability, uh, yes. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, have a seat. Do you guys want some popcorn? There's a, a, you know, there's the water cooler over there too. And then he heads back to talk to. And then I think Simon just goes, like, sort of leans over to Raf and goes, like, I thought it was always donuts. <laughs> cool. I think so, I'm like, uh, there's like a moment where it's like, it's like okay. I, I think I missed I nearly hit that guy's hand. I was like supposed I was not aiming. <sighs> well. well, it's still a good shot. It's supposed to go in his cup. Uh, well, he was impressed either anyway, so yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm actually going to have some of that popcorn. <laughs> Nice, this little like red and white stripes and this little popcorn dispenser like from a like fake you know old-timey movie type place and there are these little bags on the side and you get yourself a little bit of a heavily buttered popcorn and we'll cut away from this scene so dog you were headed out to try to see if you could actually find some folks who uh were dealing in this illicit substance. Are you bringing anyone along with you or is this a solo thing for dog? Oh, golden boy and Brutus are coming with me. Awesome. It's like, that seems great. I mean, dog, I could see in, in scary places, but Dr. Emery, that's going to be interesting. And then the shining, smiling, handsome golden boy. Yeah. I mean, I, first, hmm, sorry. Maybe I should uh, leave the jacket, right? Because that, is not the kind of clothes you wear in there but uh, otherwise this side uh, i mean i've i've been to places like that in my youth of course but uh, you know well they haven't changed a bit i promise you <sighs> yeah yeah i've changed but uh, i wasn't born ivy league, ivy league so that's true you've, you've been bad before but before we go there we should probably not skip ahead of a particular liaison that was uh, some spa related uh, yeah. visit so let's let's jump to that first so we cut into spa and uh sylvia brown is there and uh yeah i think she's not actually washing any of the dogs or cats or anything along those lines she just kind of handling customer stuff. There's an assistant manager here. She also got this large book. She's like working, looking through some different like ad layouts and stuff for the, the circular that she's about to put in the paper. And when you come in and she looks up, 
Hey, Marty. Closes her book. Uh, 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 Miss Brown, I was... Uh, call uh, me Syl. Please, call me Syl. Syl. <laughs> I was... Uh, I, I was wondering if you might be, uh, well, um, if you might be free Friday evening for perhaps a, a, a nice dinner and maybe a show. Yes, I I would be free Friday evening. That sounds that sounds really great. Uh, yes, 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 it does. Um, um. um uh, should um, should I pick you up here? You know what? Let me give you my address, okay, Marty? That that would be very nice. Yes, uh, yeah. She goes over and like grabs a little pad of paper and quickly writes her name down and this like big flowing script and her her phone number and then even like scribbles in her quick email address and. Then she rips it off and when she hands it to you, you see there's like a little heart and for the O for brown. <laughs> and well, uh, uh, then uh, um, I, I suppose I'll see you at, at, at eight o'clock. Okay, I'll see you at eight. You, you look great. Uh, th thank you. Oh, this old thing. <laughs> uh, you, you, you look very nice too. Thank you. See you Friday. Nice. And then you move quickly because you can do that really well. <laughs> now we cut to, oh man, what is, what is the name of our, you're headed to like a bar, like a scuzzy bar. Is that right? You mentioned biker bar, I think. I would want to know if she said yes, before we go to any kind of bar. Uh, this is information. This is vital information. She said, "Yes, we're going to go have dinner and a, and a show." I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to. I mean, surely they've got like theater here. That's classier, right? Depends on the theater, really. We got Maybe a little something, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe some Shakespeare stuff or something like that. You can't go wrong with Shakespeare. I hope. Ch check the critics. Check the critics. Some yeah. people go wild with theaters. You, you, would it be better to go to a movie? Depends on the movie. We'll figure something out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Brutus. Sure. Talk. Sure. And I clap you on the shoulder. Come on. I wish you the best of luck. You already deserve this. Sort of blush. Yep, just just focus on the good company. You don't have to get the venue perfect. Oh God, we'll have to talk. Oh, that's why oh. you go to a movie or a, a theater thing first. Yep. So you have something to talk about. Hey, dinner after show. Very good. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Now he's like, oh, should we, we get a discount if we go to the five o'clock show? That's a senior citizen discount. And <laughs> I can see that. Mapping guys, it all out. Uh, you guys come in, and the first thing that you hear is the clack of billiard balls uh, as there is a pool table. This is a scuzzy bar that, for some reason, the clientele enjoy hair band metal uh there's a lot of leather here you when you came in doc you saw a number of nice looking motorcycles parked just out front um what do, what do we what is the name of this biker bar that's on the highway that connects beechwood and bedlam i got a suggestion in the chat oh we do tumbleweeds that sounds good I'm into it. So a name like Tumbleweeds, of course, there's like wagon wheel lights that like mm -hmm. hang above a few different places. Right. Classic. So it's got a little bit of a saloon-ish vibe that, that used to happen, but now they're playing hair band metal and there's posters of like, you know, guns and roses and 
other like winger. Um, oh, they got like road signs up on the wall. So oh feel. yeah. Oh yeah. Road signs, but not too many because then you look like your TGI Fridays or something. So yeah. It's like, Stu, would you stop bring bringing yield signs? Okay, we're starting to look weird. It's getting weird, Stu. Just take that to your little apartment or whatever. You come in, older, a lot of older clientele, but there are a few areas where you can see pockets of like, this is probably gang. Like they're all wearing the same patches on their leather jackets. And Dr. Embry, give us a quick flashback to the last time that you came to Tumbleweeds. I, I mean, were you, were you flux or were you, um, what was, oh shoot. Is it black current or what was your, yeah. Black current when you were a minion. Oh, you're talking to me, Yusby. I'm just trying to figure out, uh, I think Brutus has to be 73, 74, something like that, maybe 72. So, and he stopped being a super villain when he was 30. So it's 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. But Tumbleweeds was ago. still, yeah, well, Tumbleweeds was still a thing then, back then. And uh, he went in there to meet uh, Metalhead, Metalhead who was um, one of the earlier black metal fans. And he had actually a hat that was made of metal, metal ugh, or looked like it. And they, they had to trade some sort of weird uh, meteorite metal that then doesn't exist on earth and has a very weird name. Um, not exactly unobtainium, but very rarium or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, and um, it was it was very fraught because Metal had it brought his whole gang and Dr. Flux was in there alone. But what and then Metalhead was like, yeah, you know what, you're totally outnumbered and we are all Metalheads and they pulled out those the chains and all of these metal stuff and um like uh, and and uh, dr flex just smart uh, you you could see he had a, a monitor in front of his helmet and you could see a rather generic uh, newscaster face and that one smiled like uh, yeah you uh, and you know and and said yeah you know what you uh you look you uneducated little um scullywag you know what metal does? Conducts electricity. And then the whole room goes up and kind of like lightning stuff and everybody goes <laughs> and then they fall down and uh, Dr. It's Flux awesome. takes the, the very, very rarium and uh, walks out and, nice. uh, throw, and throws a, um, a bundle of money on the, on the counter and says, uh, here, for your, for your decorations of your trouble. And so when you guys come in, you see the like score marks are still embedded on the wooden floor from the electrics uh, from our flashback. Like they haven't fixed it in 40 years. It's almost part of the ambiance of this place. Uh, so it seems like dog, they're following a bit of your lead perhaps. What do you do? Well, all right. Uh, now that I've got the folks who look like gangsters lined up, I'll head to the bar, order myself a drink. Uh, probably a non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> nope, no shit. I mean... Yeah, I, I think the bartender, the bartender's reaction is, do you, you want to... Okay, hold on. Don't get much call for that around here. Really? You ain't got no, uh, nobody chasing their chips out here? People come here, they come to get drunk. But I'm sure I've got some. Just give me a minute, lady. I mean, otherwise, if you got some milk back there. And he, if I gotta bend on your mom. 
he chuckles and he's kind of bit down and you hear some bottles rustle around. Then he says, uh, I've got a frosted mug. It's not like I kept this cold. So Thanks. Pulls a mug out of the little cooler area and puts like an O'Doul's or something in front of you. Now, do you guys all three walk in like you're all three together, right? Like the three. Yeah, guys, I would think three? so. Yeah. Okay. It's totally cool. Just making sure. Uh, what I are you think, having? Uh, yeah, I, I think that I heard Dog talk about this being gang and gangster. And mm-hmm. considering how I'm dressed, I'm I'm hearkening back to really Golden Boy's idea of gangster. So he's putting on a very 40s mobster sort of feel, completely misreading what gangster type we're talking here. And he goes, so he goes, yeah, I'll take whiskey, whiskey there. All right. Now you're talking about language. Do you have coffee? Yeah. Yeah, I got some. I got some Java. So he'll pour you a a nice whiskey and then he heads over to the coffee pot. And it's one of those like old metal single eye coffee pot. I remember this coffee pot. (laughs) It's the same coffee pot. It's the same coffee pot. (laughs) It's like no longer looks like glass as much as like this amber colored glass so it's no longer clear and he'll pour you black coffee since we got a couple drops a couple creamers if you need it oh no no i'll take it black Hmm. black's fine so yeah he heads down the bar takes a couple orders and settles back i'm seeing you I haven't seen you all around here. Not gonna tumble weeds, just traveling through. Yeah, we're here to see the sights and talk to a few people. Hmm. Well, be careful. But everybody here is decent enough as long as you're decent to them. Question: Do they have pictures of of old patrons or stuff like this on the wall? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, like, they've got. Do like I a... see? Do I see Metalhead there with his weird gang guys? Because yeah, you see Metalhead and and all the shinies and there's a few like it's those are the old ones, right? Those that's forty years ago, so they're yellowed with age. Those photos are few old Polaroids that you can't really make anything out of because it's just been so long that they've been thumbtacked up but there are another of other gangs that uh are up there most of them are not don't seem to be supers in any way that's short laws and that sort of thing yeah um and i think that uh your the bartender will say uh those guys over there, they're the chosen few. That's a gang. Be careful around them. Everybody else is fine. Hmm. How long they've been running this area? You've been running up and down 95 for, or actually, I don't know, like what would be a California Highway 4? I think 95 is in like East Coast. So probably a real low numbers, right? Uh, so probably, they've been running up and down five for last 10 years i would say they rove out the pecker was the last of those guys so really oh yeah. i wonder where they're drinking now i don't think they're drinking anywhere huh. all mean, right thanks for the warning drove them out the final way if you know what i mean they're not they don't play except for keeps hmm and I pay for my my beer with a larger than necessary b- bill, and I'm like, "You sure you don't have more of this in the back, way in the back?" I guess I'll go look. Would be good. And then I will. Uh, 
basically grab a stool or a chair and drag it over to the chosen few table and do the if it's a chair with the back i do the reverse seat totally has a chair with the back and that sounds amazing so you like sidle up to this is this is a gang that spans obviously spans at least two generations maybe maybe three you're not sure because there's Mm -hmm. a couple of like grizzled beards but uh it's there's some mixed ethnicity this is not like an aryan white the chosen few seem to have broadened their reach as it were in recruitment and you see that there are a number of them have patches uh then they're sitting around this large circular table chatting and uh, then there are a few who as you move past them they watch you they're a little younger they don't have patches they're probably prospects you know just there to do menial tasks learn how the gang works and also kind of be the cannon fodder if need be yeah i don't waste time with the youngins yeah so when when dog moves up uh golden boy dr Emery, are you guys staying at the bar and just keeping an eye out or do you go and follow her keeping an eye out sounds like a good option here okay you're uh, on mute tyler yeah unless dog makes any indication like come with come with over there it seems like doing the backup thing is probably the better you'll be over there quick enough Mm -hmm. (laughs) true yeah it's basically about. like you followed me considering how little time it's going to take you but yeah i'll take a draft off of my frosted mug of unbeer and just say hey i respect your gentleman's time so i'm just going to ask a simple question anybody holding blue damn all right that is bold let's have you Uh, Give me a jaw roll to see if you look legit enough for none of them to come back at you. Um, Sure. Definitely feel like you're being a brick, but just like walking. Yeah, this also seems pretty normal, though. And yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that's uh, one, three, four, five. That's a good difficulty, but tension is involved in the roll. Sure. Hmm. I don't necessarily think the highly trained will help me out here. Fair enough. But the defense will help, so if you have any any, uh, repercussions. Sure. All right, then let's just Ah, let's spend one spark. That's what it's here for. I hopped over to the tab with the die roller. It's a Raphael's roll. I went, oh no, but that's that no, was Raphael's roll. That is, that is the wrong okay. roll. Here we go. Hey, all right. Well, that's three successes. Oof. One oof that I. You you're fine because of your your defense. So. Nope. And one of the one of the group that's sitting around this table you see he's got a like a reed richards like white streak in his hair his hair's like feather back and you see that he's got a patch that says cotton on it uh and then another thing says sergeant at arms for the chosen few he says oh you uh want to learn how to fly old lady I don't think you can stand it. It's not about learning. It's about the experience. It's some heavy shit. It's not like I got some kind of medical form for you to sign, but if you got 150 bucks, I'm holding. Hmm. And that's just one ride, huh? 150. Oh, you live to the other side of it. You, you'll be back for more. Huh. Goodness. I ain't no expert on the value of things, but that seems pretty hefty. 
guys kind of chuckle a little bit. You know, I remember when a candy bar was just 60 cents, but it still don't make any sense. <sighs> I think it's some kind of fucking flea market. Now that's your face, Sonny. Oh, man, <laughs> one of the guys like starts to stand up and you see he's like a younger, skinnier version of this guy and Cotton just puts his hand up. He's like, no, no, no. I put the lady jaw at me. That's good. That was good. That was good. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Are you looking for a discount or are you just trying to make, make me cry? Well, if you're a sergeant at arms, I'll be here all day if I'm trying to make you cry, wouldn't I? No shit. Ah. So stop wasting my time and yours. 150 or something in trade. I'll trade you the continued possession of all of your teeth. And then you hear like a ooh, as the guys all chuckle and laugh and jeer a little bit. He says, well, you want my teeth? You have to come get them. He pushes himself <laughs> back and he starts to stand this up. Where, this is immediately when I bounce his head off of the table. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's like does the thing where he's going to and you just reach forward and slam his head forward. I mean, I think that's a thing you do, right? I think I think that's exactly what you do. Like you slam his face forward onto the table and the prospects are moving in on you in seconds. Uh, he comes up, his mouth's bloody where his teeth, they kind of hit his lips and the blood's all over his teeth and, uh, and he pops up and things are not looking great here at all it looks like a fight is about to break out do you um, mean that things look like they're the best right now i think <laughs> i'm like lining up thinking all right so skinny so and so number two is going to be about here and he's going to get eyes full of beer <laughs> and then i'm going to punch this guy <laughs> and then we're off to the races <laughs> Oh, that's sweet dog is just like going going buck wild just already connecting the dots of of this insane fight sequence i think that sounds awesome i do want to get a quick reaction what does golden boy you get the first reaction between you and dr amory because golden boy what do you do when you see dog do that what's your reaction yeah, yeah i think there's just the you know casually watching the conversation and then the sudden violence i look over Brutus, she just slammed that boy's head into a table. Yeah, that's a uh, lot. Haven't seen that since I was young. Um, and I'm pulling out the some. Um, it is my um, Emma, the electromagnetic manipulation array. But it kind of might look like a taser if you're not too careful. I'm slowly getting up like mm, and stretching myself and i turn over to uh, marty and say do you know that when i was really young i was a boxer eh, fascinating and i'll slam back the whiskey look at the bartender i'll have another uh excuse me i say to brutus and i am zooming over there and with the idea that dog knows how to handle herself in like the immediate around her mm -hmm. group i'm my move is to run over to the ones that are a little further away hopefully catching the side of the table and boom big flash cool blind flash right and then after golden boy takes off and you see this flash dr emory what do you do well um when he takes off i put on my sunglasses because I, I know him. I know what he does. Also, they look cool. I'm just slowly getting up, twirling the, the taser around a bit and standing uh, in just ready to help people and tase people who are who get out of line. Nice. Sweet. So as this action sequence starts up, we'll turn the page and we cut back 
to uh, Raphael and the Swell. So Raphael and the Swell, you were waiting for uh, your detective Flannery. And after you guys are like enjoying the popcorn, I assume, or not, yeah. as it were, drinking some from those little triangular, like conical cups of the from the water cooler thing. Mm. They've got a flat screen TV that's showing. I mean, cops. Like, is it too much? Maybe, maybe it's showing the. No, I don't think they would show cops. That's that's way that that's pretty violent. I think they're showing like full house. That seems like a thing that they would be showing at the Beechwood Police Department in the waiting room. And then the door opens up and you see a woman in a nice uh, pantsuit and she comes over. You see that she's got a, a badge on her belt as well as a, a gun. And she says, wow. <laughs> that Detectives? But Joey is full of shit. Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Simonson. Simmons. Sorry, Mr. Yeah, Simmons. Sir. New Year's the swell. <laughs> oh, uh, she has a seat. I imagine it's like the waiting room, right? So there's a string of chairs that are all up against the back wall. The gentlemen were offering to help out with the case that I'm working on. Is that right? Yes. Um, we, uh, well, and I, you know, I take out the cards and I give her the card of our agency. <laughs> I've heard about you guys. It has an email on. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, so uh, we heard uh, that there was some problems with uh, yes well n n newly powered uh, individuals because of uh, some sort of uh, illicit drugs uh, now of course uh, drugs uh, that's not uh, our forte but uh, superpowers that that is our specialty yeah yeah uh, <clears throat> so we're rather sure that the last four deaths that we've had, three here in Beachwood, one in Bedlam, um, of males between 18 and 28 have all been attributed to this drug, which supposedly gives you heightened physical abilities. They're calling it blue on the streets. Uh, we've only found the after effects. We're, st we're still trying to get a sample of it so we can have it tested our labs. So we're pretty early on here. I'm trying to stay ahead of it because once it gets some bad press, then I worry that lots of stupid young kids without your abilities are going to run looking for it. So yeah. anything you can do to help us keep it off the streets would be great. I can't exactly turn files over to you, but of if course. you want to do some investigation of your own, I'll provide you the names of the victims, but this is completely between us. Of course. This is not how I normally like to work, but I don't normally have to deal with your specialty. So, uh, is there are there any victims that have uh, survived their ordeal? None that we know of. I'm hoping that no one who survives it is talking about it and that the mortality rate isn't 100%. Uh, 
but I'm dealing with the facts that I have. Four dead bodies, all of them due to one person uh, heart exploded, another person fell from an extreme height, one person's body just fell apart on them. Incredible amount of ligament tears and damage to their joints. They slammed into a wall. The person who fell from great heights, were they around a high building or was it somewhere out in the open? It's out in the open, hmm. which makes me believe that they may have actually been flying. I'm not sure how, that's just the hunch that I have. Seems a solid one. Thank you. She pulls out a couple cards. This is my business card. If you hear anything, it has an email on it. But feel free to call me. Yes. Anytime, day or night, anything we can do to get this off the streets and keep it quiet, I would appreciate it. I'm really worried about any kind of science that could do this to people. I appreciate that you guys do what you do, right? Please don't feel like I'm saying that you shouldn't be the heroes that you have been. What I'm worried about is people who don't have that character were given that capability. Mm -hmm. Well, there's of course, uh, there's, there's, it's never been a very exact science uh, powers. It's always, it's odd how it happens. Uh, it's always very strange cases, but- um, I mean, you should yes, tell us how you got your powers. <laughs> Well, that was an, an, uh, an unfortunate accident. Uh, <laughs> radiation, it's uh, ugly business. It's, uh, I'm, I'm lucky to still be alive, uh, really. <laughs> but uh, yes, I had a lot of time to get accustomed to, to well, my resizing. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yes, uh, doing it for a rush, it's probably never a good idea. But, of course, everyone responds differently to abilities. Uh, not everyone becomes a superhero, after all. Right. Yeah, plenty go the other way. If you go back. Yes. Oh. But um, it uh, would probably be. A... I mean, we might need to put some information out there, uh, because uh, this yeah. is uh, it's, it's a dangerous thing. And you sure we can't get the rest of those files? I'm sorry. We totally understand. It's, uh, yes. it's, uh, you have your job. If this continues, maybe the pressure will open things up for me. But at this point, that's that's about as far as I can go. We wouldn't wish to put you out further than you have already been put out. Thanks. Thanks. Well, should we? We we probably have we have places to be now, don't we? As well. Yes. Um, we'll see what um, if we can help in any way. Well, we'll find out more. And of course, if we find anything, we'll we'll let you know. And if I get more information, I'll let you know as well. Thank you. I think as we're leaving, I would like lean into the swell. I'm like, 
I should totally break into her office. I could scale the building and break into the office. Maybe she I mean, that's for later. Oh, climb to the window. I'm not, I'm not saying don't do it ever, but maybe not yet. Also, they, it would be too obvious. <laughs> It doesn't feel right breaking into a place during the day. Oh, also, please, don't, don't, don't break into a police office. It's just, not just yet. I've done it before, it's fine. I've done it a thousand times. It's... Well, uh, they don't always like to show. Let, let's see if the thousand and one for later. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, so the two of you head out and then we cut right back into the big fight. And I think dog, the first string of attacks, uh, beer and face punch connect over goes swimmingly. Then you close your eyes as the huge flash happens from golden boy. Uh, that means that there are a couple of, uh, prospects who are now blinded by the light, as it were. They're like putting their hands over their face. And dog, when you turn back around, uh, you see that the guy that was beside Cotton, the like younger, skinnier version of Cotton, mm -hmm. uh, he has something in his hand, and it looks like like a like a oh oh. Basically, it's, it's not like a traditional syringe. It's like one of those, like, you can just, like, jam it into yourself, self-injection syringe. I don't know what they're like called. Like an EpiPen? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, a, like yeah, totally. Thank you very much, Tyler. Uh, basically, like an EpiPen, but you see this stuff. It looks like kind of kind of like, a, oh, um, ritual wiper fluid, right? Mm -hmm. It's that bright blue. Right. Well... Uh, yeah, he grabs that, and it looks like he's about to jam it into his neck. Now I'm going to swing the chair that I was uh, sitting on as fully into uh, to his torso and arms area, try and knock it out of his hands. Okay, cool. I think that some tension is involved in this role, and we'll call this yet, an yet another good difficulty. Okay. I think this continues to be pretty bricky uncertain about the superness or not hmm i think i think this is normal ish yeah you're just trying okay. to use a chair to knock something out of someone's hand so sure. yeah cool I and mean, if you want to add a little flair you can take it to the super level you're on the borderline on the borderline by the way that's the song that's playing right now over the yeah by madonna Weird stations playing up in here, but uh, yeah, no, I'll let it. I'll let it sit. I'm not so flush with ideas that I can immediately push this into the super zone. So you that, want a spark? Three. I can give you a spark. Sure, I'd love that. Sure, I give you a spark. And uh, what that looks like is that there is another guy who is kind of trying to get into the action, and he just um, the taser goes off, and he does the weird, weird little thing that people do when they are uh, sat by more electricity than their bodies are happy about. Yep. And uh, let's see, so that's six, seven, eight, nine for highly trained. I don't know if super senses motion does or doesn't apply here. I think it should. All right, then. Because you have a new, brand new power. Let's bring it on. Put it on the table. All right, then. We do in this 11 dice. Maybe you have to do this um, while your eyes are still closed because Golden Boy yeah. just did the flash. That way your super senses cool. make sense. I like it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six successes. One oof that gets wow. absorbed. Yep, no problem whatsoever. You swing across the table, and yeah, we see we see a couple of teeth and head and like 
a little bit of blood from the mouth as he gets KO'd. Um, and he falls to the ground with this syringe, rolls out the little EpiPen syringe, rolls out a little bit, and uh, it's still there with a bunch of big biker boots stomping around it, but it skitters uh, away from the table. Golden Boy, uh, there are a number of folks that wish to, well, try to take Dog down. She's holding her own, but I'm curious, what are you doing? Um, so I have some of them sort of uh, blindy blindy, much, you know, a bunch of them moving in on Dog. Uh, syringe has fallen and rolled. Um, I think I'm going to rush over to kind of pop a couple of them that are on dog the attempt to you know even the odds there and as i do i'm going to kind of try at the same time to tap the syringe with my foot to maybe do a little push towards brutus i love it um so let's say that if you want to just move the syringe, that'll just be a good difficulty. If you want to move the syringe and lighten dog's load by also taking out a few more, we'll call that a pretty pretty incredible thing, right? You're, you're taking several actions at once and showing off your super speed. Let's go for the incredible. Why Make another spark? I'm throwing out sparks here because... Uh... I like no, it. Yeah, but, so perfect yeah, but uh, for this. zapping people with my with Emma just it's kind of my life, my my thing right now because I don't really want to get involved in. I have a broken arm. I mean, yeah, I mean, mm. I'll also nudge a spark golden boy's way. Well, thank you. Uh, I, nice. You're you're being a wild one by trying to do yeah, so much. Yeah, see, and you know, just flinging into combat. Yeah. So mm. my wild one, uh, super. Um, is this hands or feet? They're the same, but they're the same. I, like, I feel like movement is more important than okay. anything else here. Seven. Um, super movement. Okay, sure. That takes us to nine. Two from y'all. That takes us to eleven. And I'll drop one of my own in. That takes right. us to twelve. Okay, 12 dice against needing five pals. I think got a good chance here. Oh, don't say that. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Woo! Wow, you squeaked by. Look at all those threes, Ooh. man. <laughs> and it's the cavalcade of threes. Two ones. Uh, sweet. Ooh. Yeah. Tell me what it looks like as you clear the deck for dog and snag that blue. Um, yeah, I think that there's, uh, as I'm moving across the GD, we get the blur and we get like a panel of my foot just like kind of dipping underneath the, the syringe and kicking it up. So it's just flung out there so that with your, even with your bad hand or whatever, you could just grab it. As I uh, get towards the pile and we see the kind of zit, zit, zit between people as punch, punch. But you could see that, you know, I a couple of wild swings kind of catching me on the side and that sort of thing. So I, 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 I took blows to deliver them. Nice. And uh, then Dr. Emery, you catch the blue not even a die roll that's totally a thing you can do easily enough yeah uh dog what does it look like as you finish off uh the chosen few here because none of them were able to that blue didn't come into play nope hmm I think uh, one more nice solid body blow with the chair in hole and then it splinters. So I've got a couple of chair legs, you know, getting a few people down with a couple of jabs to the solar plexus and then bap. 
smacking them down. And then that's it. Whew. And I'll flick the table leg up into the air so that it lands on one of them. <laughs> oh, that was fun. And I'll nice. roll Sergeant over, go through his pockets. Okay. What are you looking for? Is keys? You're looking for a wallet? What are you looking for? Uh honestly, I'm looking to see if there are any more doses of blue in play. He does not have any doses of blue on him. Obviously, he as uh that younger version of him, nephew, son, not sure, was carrying. Um but yeah, if you want to check a few uh, other of the soldiers who may be the ones that have it, you can find three more doses if you're willing to kind sure. of scrounge I'll, around. I'll toss them. I'm also keeping Sergeant's phone and tossing that to Brutus. Nice. Being like, well, we could wait till he wakes up and ask him some questions, or you could probably ask his phone a whole bunch of questions. I can time. ask his phone, yeah. Yeah. Um... And I'm turning to the person who is the barista Barking. and saying <laughs> yeah. that and say, well, it's um, quite as I remember it from the back in the days. Um, nice varnish on the on the bar top. Um, take this for your trouble and I give her um, or him. I don't know. Give yeah. them um, a $50 bill. So. Cool. Any Holds the $50 bill and watches as you three walk. Um, and I turn around and I say, um, do you have any idea what became of Metalhead? Oh, he's dead. Long oh. dead. Oh, pity. Should I tell his grandson you were asking after him? No, no. Just, a, just an acquaintance. Good. I don't like talking to his grandson. If he's anything like his grandfather, I totally understand. Right. And I'm leaving. Well, the sunglasses is still on because, I mean, Why I'm kind of you're going outside. It's California. Yeah. It's sunny out. It's true. It's true. And mm -hmm. they're also, of course, they're bifocal. So, I mean, good. You got the good stuff. Yeah. It's everything yeah. you need. Nice. Cool. Yeah, nice. So when the three of you all head out to I'm not sure how you like got here. I'm sure dog are waiting <laughs> Uber. <laughs> yeah, no. No. No, oh, I'm wrong here. Come on. Yeah, Maybe as yeah. we pass, I I pass by some photograph of like dog and one or two other cyclists that she might have hung out with. And it's like so, it's framed like this on the inside but clearly like it was signed in lipstick and it just says fuck you <laughs> nice nice uh, yeah so you guys head back down I-5 what we are now going to call this I-5 is what you were on you're heading back oh. down I-5 and I can't and I-5 and somebody else has to drive the sedan I can't not with a broken arm. That's, you know, not, that's, that's a lot of work. That's, uh, no. I mean, you could automate but, it, but that'd be work. Yeah, yeah, no. Somebody else can drive while I'm looking at this shiny blue stuff and this, uh, and try to crack this wonderful phone and tell everybody else how much fun that was and unexpectedly. I mean, I, I, I remember. Or, or does dog have to drive a car? I mean, you have to. I don't know if uh, Barty can drive. Don't drive much, no. Oh. I guess I'm like driving kind of a squinting car. real hard as he's like. <laughs> <sighs> Please. All right. All right. So, yeah, dog, Whatever. you drive off. Um, Not like this is a spaceship or anything, so it shouldn't be any hard. <laughs> Not. Nah, do you have a driver's license? No. <laughs> I do not ask you if you have a drive. I assume you do. I do not. <laughs> okay. Have to change that, but uh, yeah. I, I dog uh, might have like a fake, but yeah, that's no. that's that's easy to get by if you live in a uh, area where there are uh, where there's a high school. 
people, uh, young people need fake IDs, uh, fake driver's license all the time. Yeah. I hear, I hear, I I'm mean, here. it's a rumor. Hear. It's a rumor. Yeah. Yeah. Where did I, hear I, I've, I've seen it on TV. Actually, I've watched that Veronica Mars show and they talked about it a lot. So I assume it's a thing with young people. When I was young and we wanted to have a drink, we had a drink, but uh, it was different times, different, different city. I lost my license cause that uh, nice young man at the test got all faint hearted. I wasn't gonna run into that car. Well, okay. Youngsters just don't have the steel they used to. Exactly, you wanna get where you're going. Six inches from a bumper is just fine. Well, I mean, if you didn't hit it, you didn't hit it. And your reflexes are probably a lot better than this person's. Exactly. I thought it should be a pass-fail sort of thing. Technically, it was, wasn't it? Well, I didn't hit anything or kill anybody. I should have passed. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't hit anything or kill anybody, that what more could any anybody want? That I thought that was the point of driving. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, those folks dealing the stuff. Mm-hmm. Boyo sure was quick to be willing to stick himself with it. Uh, we hearing about people dying. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. I they have say to, no or not. Well, I have to think a dealer's gonna know. So it must not kill everybody. I mean, he'd mm. really be intently wanting to do something if he thought it was. Well, uh, maybe he just wanted to impress his uh, his his whatever that the sergeant or whatever the gang leader or guy was maybe he just wanted to impress him Probably horses are never call. impressive you do stupid stuff if you're young yeah mm. maybe to impress people you really think are the world come on i have to think they've heard of people who could take it and come back hmm. or they haven't come. seen enough people die to think that maybe it could happen to them mm. i'm That's strong i can take it yeah. Um, but we'll see how lethal this thing, this stuff really is. So. Getting anything off the phone? Ah, uh, uh, wait, g g give me, I, I was just talking to you. I can't, I'm, I'm not that good at multitasking with one hand. Oh, oh, Marty. Yeah. Sorry. Marty, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we all get a little slower when we get old, Brutus, I understand. <sighs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll Thanks. get you back to the lab and it'll be all clear. Get me back to the lab and it will be all clear as daylight. Cool. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll bring that scene to a close. Did, I've got did we high five quick... each other enough to get some Yes, spark sorry, back? sorry, sorry. Yeah, that was in my head and then I was like, thinking the next scene instead of dealing with things. Yes, all of you, definitely the like squabbling, that was delightful. Uh, so let's say four spark to all three of you. That was that was just a delightful car scene. Um, I really loved that. So yeah. Um, so I've got two quick scenes before we bring the session to a close. Well, yeah, should be quickish scenes. I think the first one is the swell and Raphael, the two of you guys after heading down to Beachwood Police Department. You come back to the office. And uh, when you come back, you see Esther is there and seated in a chair is, um, if you guys take a look in the Molliverse cast uh, under F14 is um, pretty handsome guy with long dreads that just come down past his shoulders. And Raphael and uh, Swell, you both recognize him. This is uh, Drew McIntosh. 
this is his like civilian ID, but both of you know him as Obsidian. Obsidian was the next to last sidekick of Ghost Gunner, meaning like Ghost Gunner had a psychic after Obsidian. Obsidian kind of went Nightwing, if, if if that shorthand phrase makes any sense. If it doesn't, I'll explain it further. He went he went solo to do his own soloing stuff, uh, but yeah, the kid that you guys know is Obsidian he is there waiting for you. He's been talking to Esther, and he immediately stands up when the two of you guys come in. We'll pick up with that. That's just a like a tease and our and at the end there. So that'll be our opening scene next next session. And then the last little like post credits or whatever sequence is come back. We see tumbleweeds go in and the chosen few are starting to get up with blood. One guy like wiping in his mouth, you know, cotton is wiping in his mouth and Rikishin pulls out a tooth and the guy who was about to do the blue says, Unk, Unk, they took it. He said, shit. I better call Peril. He says, Peril, P-E-R-I-L, because it's, you know, comic we can see it's written down. Then we, we stay in the bar Go over to this booth where a woman with kind of that like dyed her hair, but it's what I, my wife's called it skunk hair, like dyed her hair blonde, but now the natural color is growing out. And so you have this kind of two tone thing. And she's looking down at her phone, and we see that she's taken a couple of pictures of the three of Golden Boy, Dr. Emery and dog and she's sending a text to someone on her contacts that says lockjaw and she says uh yeah that one was asking about your grandpa and then she hit send oh right and and also dr emery was wearing sunglasses uh the name on the text like she's sending a text Mm -hmm. to someone called Lockjaw. I was thinking it would be death metal. Ooh, damn. I should I should have consulted with you beforehand. Because that would be great. So um, you're the GM, you can still change it. No, nah, I'm sticking with lockjaw. I'm sticking with lockjaw. I have a I have a I have a thing. I have an idea, but but death metal's pretty great. So that will bring our session. To uh, close, let's go through our questions, which I've cleverly stuck at the bottom. Yeah, the Gil Dewey image. Someone else found that, and uh, kudos. That is the best Gil Dewey. I had a different picture I was going to throw in, and I saw that was there, and I'm like, yeah, that's way better. Thank you. I will use this. This is going to be probably Cheatham, uh, Dewey's partner. So, um, did you guys clash with someone who threatened your neighborhood or someone from your past? We legitimately did that. Like 100%. I'm so excited. Proud of us. Did you protect the citizens of your neighborhood at least once? I don't know. There's like four doses of blue that aren't on the streets. That's like up to four hearts that aren't going to explode now. That's, that's true. <laughs> Just saying. I'll give it to you. Um, and then, did you defeat a villain or have a conflict with your rivals? I think taking down the chosen few counts. Cool. Now I'll go around the horn, starting from the left, heading to the right. So, Golden Boy, did you struggle with your normal day to day obligations or problems with your age or past? I think so. Yeah. Did you support another teammate when they needed you? Yes. Peacock, El Pavo Real. Uh, did you struggle with your normal day-to-day obligations or problems with your age or past? I think the uh, the worry over Hugo. Yeah, I think the worry over Hugo. I think the scene at the roost. This that that was. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Mm. And then, did you support uh, another teammate when they needed you? 
Yeah, I think I... I think so. I think the swells back a couple times there. And then, dog, did you struggle with your normal day-to-day obligations or problems with your age or past? Eh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. I think you mostly had a good time. Yeah. Uh, Did you support another teammate when they needed you? I think so. I think so, too. The cyclist. Did you struggle? I had a broken arm because I went on a cruise with my daughter, so that's my past. So there we I go. did struggle a bit. Absolutely. And they even it limited your interactions with some stuff in the big action sequence. So I'm I'm here for that. That sounds great. Did you support another teammate when they needed yep. you? I sapped uh, the chosen few, that which was fun. That was that was pretty fun. And then the swell. Did you struggle with your normal day-to-day obligations or problems with your age or past? Um, I mean I had a flashback, but <laughs> and I think because I tied it in at the end with gut with yes. gut gutter, we'll say yes. That's, we'll that's say yes. Okay, I was like, next time I will, but maybe not uh, now. Maybe but I had know. flashbacks. I think, maybe uh... I think that's the thing. I, I've got to. You may be able to double dip. We'll see. We'll see. Did you support another teammate when they needed you? Uh, yes. All right. Awesome. That will finish up our XP. Now we get to go through the whole rigmarole or the fun process. Uh, it, based on your point of view i love it of wishes who'd like to go first with wishes will end with stars i just want to say you preempted one of my wishes which was when we talked about the metalheads um oh. grandson i was like well that has to this needs to be follow up on that and then we got that before i was there i was like <laughs> yes yes it's a thing yes i'm glad i'm glad that yeah um, no i'm trying to think of a natural wish now well you stole my wish so <sighs> by making it happen all right cool uh awesome and if you think of any more as people bring up stuff feel free to jump in and uh add that who else would like to give a wish or two uh, i totally have a wish and it was also a bit preempted at least in one case because i would like to hear origin stories how did people true. get their powers? Origin why stories is, is definitely why is a thing. Golden Boy so damn fast. And how did Dana end up in the Mojo Wars? Was she born there? We, we, we don't know. Maybe we'll find out. I mean, we'll I know what out. the answer is, but we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I also know where Dr. Emery got his powers from, but I uh, won't tell you. Mm-hmm. All right. That's good. I like it. Do it's now have a wish. I figured out one from that one is I would like there to be a flashback to when Raphael was a sidekick at some point. Oh my gosh. To his mom, because he was sidekick to his mom. That's right. Have we figured have we any idea how old Raphael is? Is he older or younger than Buddhist? I think he might be. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I think he's young. He well, he was younger than Marty. Mm-hmm. And I think he's younger, still younger than the swell. I will figure that out. Yeah. Got to for sure. That's this good. This is this is comic, so I'm perfectly satisfied with things being a little tiny wimey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we, we going to be as always. bad as the star girl okay show i don't know but sure i'm, I'm I good with gonna be that bad but you know if we stretch things a little bit comics have definitely done much much oh, much worse yeah yeah stretch it and mix you it could in be 30 for multiple decades that's right <laughs> absolutely that's just how that works uh Cool. Uh, so, Jen, it seems like you have the floor, so why don't you... That's what I get for speaking up with my other ideas that aren't my wish that I don't have thought of yet. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to second on uh, on flashbacks and at origin stories. I think that's fun. Um... Also, just... Uh anything in next session that sort of 
ties back to our connections with the people of Beechwood. I think is good. I loved seeing. Yeah, this is. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut until it's actually stars time. <laughs> good call, Jen. We had to pull it back. All right, uh, Tyler or Jan, who'd like to go next for wishes? I can go. Um, I, I'm going to echo, of course, origin stories. I think this is a good spot for some origin stories. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I, I kind of wish that we will keep in this gritty investigative feel. Uh, I like us going to contacts or tracking down stuff rather than it be something big and enormous. You know, all of a sudden it's a boss fight in a warehouse sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Cool. Thanks, Tyler. Jan, what you got? Uh, not a lot, honestly, I guess the only like i couldn't think of anything and now i'm just gonna like, well maybe it's like well maybe we'll do that next session but i'd still like to build on the agency a bit more as in get more people involved there <laughs> you mean more employees or um, well yeah sure. you know hero heroes for hire <laughs> people that that we made the like we, we we of course also made this agency a bit for ourselves but it is also something that would be a cool service for other heroes to sign up to that gives me one other wish which maybe next session is too early for it but i would like at some point to have competing cases like we actually have a work more on our to do than just one case at a time. Like, so we actually have to. I'm, I've got you. I've got you. Okay. That is definitely a thing. That is literally exactly what I set up at the end. So I'm excited about that. I'm glad that you want it. So I don't feel bad. Yay. Awesome. That is a good list of uh, wishes, friends. Jan, you went last for wishes. You get to go first for stars. Um, a was. Uh... I, I had a lot of fun uh, with playing with, with the swell. <laughs> I also thank you, Rich, for that that uh, flashback scene. That was <laughs> very funny. Um, I loved uh, Brutus's uh, broken arm. I was did not see that coming. <laughs> I didn't either. That was great. Uh, Dana was badass as always. And uh, yeah, Golden Boy is all just Golden Boy is funny as hell. Or well, I guess Tyler is funny. <laughs> good material, good performance. Yes, you're not wrong. It's good stuff. Cool. Thank you, Jan Tyler. Stars. Uh, I like the way you laid out kind of the flow of this session. It was really cool. We had a lot packed into it. Um, we had very personal stuff. We had, a, we got a nice flashback out of Swell, which is always good. Um, we we got into action. We had, you know, one on or information gathering with NPCs, which is fun to see. Uh, so it was nicely put together session, really fun. Um, I loved uh alex and jan at the police department uh the way both of you characterized and how you dealt with the police was fun i thought it was cool alex to see the kind of you know hearkening back to how peacock would handle these sort of things normally you know i love the uh well i made sure to bring the the smoke bombs just in case you know the the feel of that was really cool and I think it was nice character development to see the swell as someone who is that kind of hero cops want to work with. Um, someone they can depend on, someone who has a name out there as a lifesaver, where, you know, maybe there's a bit more endangerment involved in what Peacock or Dog have done over the years. Swell is one of these people that the cops are like, you know, 
this is what we wish they all would be like. Um, then having uh, us do, you know, a bar fight. I thought it was really cool to see the three of us, how we interact. Uh, I thought it was delightful, Sabine, that Bruce just back there kind of casually watching and handling things just, mm, mm, mm. that's very, that seems so in character. It gives such a good view of kind of how Brutus involves themselves in a situation. Dog was badass. I mean, that that whole interaction with that gangster was whoof, spot on. It was really nice. And it was, it was kind of cool to have that turn just sort of happen. And, you know, because it, it gave Sabine and I a kind of a cool chance to react. And I like seeing Golden Boy throw himself in. So, you know, that was that was fun. That was tons of fun. Oh, yeah. Yes, that was. That was very surprising. Oh, like, oh, we're here now. I, I what, We just jumped like three steps that I thought were going to happen in, in leading up to here. This is delightful. I don't like wasting time. I know. It was very bricky of you. I loved it. Jen, you're up with stars that you held, you held back one, so I know you have at least one. Yes. Uh, I, I loved getting a scene with uh, golden boy in court that was so miserable <laughs> oh and his business partner and just oh oh goodness yeah i loved i loved that in that sort of oh good kind of way so that was that was fun uh I liked seeing a little tiny sliver of like the the forming social paradigm at the office for take charge heroes for hire. Um, I enjoy the details with Esther, like just sort of effortlessly making things work and being like, "Of course, you guys have a website <laughs> and a contact form." <laughs> It's not challenging. I'm a robot. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very, very pleasing. Uh, I loved, I loved listening to uh, the swell and the peacock in the police station, and the ex and the flip from the extreme patronization to to the wide-eyed love. That was very, very amusing. And yeah, I love tearing loose and doing a bar fight too. Good highlights all over the session. I just love how well you guys shift tones. It's so delightful to like, oh, this is a scene where this happens. And oh, wow, totally radically different, but also still feels right at home or appropriate for those characters. I love that. That's just awesome. Uh, There's something neat seeing us when we get, like the three of us in combat, you can tell we fought battles for freaking decades. Yeah. There's that, the, the yips, the nerves, the butterflies have kind of disappeared in our world. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's super interesting. It's not really about like, will you win this fight? It's about like other stuff. Like that's fun. Cool. I'm glad you dug that. Sabine, what stars did you want to hand out? Uh yeah, this was a really fun session. I really like the the way you started with the introductions, with uh, the flashback with the Statue of Liberty. I really enjoyed that, and the courtroom scene. Yeah, that was also a lot of fun, and uh, the whole Ruth thing. <laughs> Poor Raphael, just being pushed out of the roost because, I mean, he's not a chick, a little nestling anymore. He's more like, I don't know. It was a lot of, I, I really loved that. So, yeah. What I also loved was the whole, was the way that um, Marty asked Sylvia out. It was just like, yeah, these are elderly people and uh, he got to the point and there was no real huge drama. This was this wasn't a teenager, 
yay, us for not having teenager drama, but uh, everybody was still very interested, of course, because he's their friend and this is a new thing and yay. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. And um, everything else, the whole scene with the cops and the, and the uh, police station, that was, uh, was just great. Um, and I, I love the poor, poor peacock who was just wasn't recognized as uh, a great hero who had done a lot of stuff for Beechwood. Um, yeah, and 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 uh, Brutus feels your pain, Raphael, on this. This is this is unbearable. Um, also, the whole scene with dog, and I thought, yeah, well, this will go like this, and then it didn't because dog doesn't really like drug dealers. I figure so. Yeah, kudos to that. That was that was amazing, and uh, the whole fight scene was a lot of fun. Uh, the, when when Gold boiled it up and gave me the the opportunity to put on my sunglasses, because I mean, old Samuel J L. Jackson with sunglasses is just just awesome. Thank you for that. That's a huge star, and Rich, a huge star, huge star for you for pulling off this whole thing. And this world keeps getting richer and richer and it's, it's a delight. So thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Uh, and then Alex, are there any stars left? It's okay. If you yeah, I mean, I'll start out. Sabine stole one that I was like, well, no one's gonna choose this one. I mean, it's a great one, but no one's gonna choose it because that will be overlooked. But it was just that little detail from Brutus of like, you know, well, Golden Boy's going to do a flash, so the <laughs> dude. <laughs> I just yeah, imagine perfect. You know, you just know the timing, so you just the sunglasses on, and then, <laughs> and you just like, yeah. Um, the other one that I wanted, to, you know, I I agree with all the rest of the ones, though, wholeheartedly. Uh, but um, the phone call with Hugo, just the weary, you could hear the weariness in, like. You could tell just from the tone of voice that he's having a hard time at work and that's the, oh, he sounds, he sounds tired. And that, that really came through. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah, stars and kudos across the board, uh, echoes or, or dittos on all the stuff you all thrown out. I'm so excited and happy to learn more about the swell and try to push uh, the swell forward. I'm looking forward to next week when we can do some more uh, swell history. That, that is going to be fun. Um, and now I have to furiously think about the flashback for Raph as a psychic. Wow, that's going to be that's going to be bananas. I love it. Well, thank you all so much. And we'll go ahead and bring this session to a close. We'll see you guys in a week.